The uh, Senate Judiciary Committee uh, will come to order. And before I uh, speak to the agenda before us today, I'd like to commend an article in the Washington Post this morning uh, to the members of the committee. It, it kind of comes as some surprise to many of us that the Bureau of Prisons maintains something like a bank, which has uh, significant uh, deposits by the federal prisoners, uh, and that there's some history of difficulty in reaching those deposits for the payment of victim restitution and child support, among other things. Uh, I'm uh, suggesting that any who are interested join me in sending a letter. Senator Grassley and I are going to ask the Bureau of Prisons for an explanation of this article. There are many questions that were raised, in, in my mind, based on previous assertions made by the Bureau of Prisons about uh, prisoners' accounts. I was under the assumption that they were small amounts maintained, just basics for commissary or whatever at the prisons. It turns out that in many instances there are hundreds of thousands of dollars in these accounts of question, from questionable sources. So uh, I ask you all to take a look at it. We're going to send a letter to the Bureau of Prisons since this is obviously in our jurisdiction. Uh, and we'll, if you'd like to sign on to the letter, we'll give you that opportunity. We have 11 items on the agenda today, nine nominations and two pieces of legislation. Six of the nominations are listed for the first time and will be held over at the request of the minority. They include Tiffany Cunningham, nominated to the Federal Circuit, Margaret Strickland, nominated to the District of New Mexico, David Chipman, nominated to be Director of the Bureau of ATF, Urge Adu, nominated to be Director of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, and Mill Graham, nominated to be Administrator of Drug Enforcement, and Kenneth Polit, nominated to be Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division. We also have three nominees who are ready for a vote today. I'll address them uh, and ask any other member who wishes to speak uh, about their nominations to do so, and then proceed with the votes on the nomination. Then I'll address the two bills on the agenda today. First, we'll be voting on Judge Deborah Boardman, who's been nominated to a seat on the U.S. District Court for the District of Maryland. She's been found uh, unanimously well qualified by the ABA and will bring real diversity to the court. She spent 11 years as a public defender, has worked as well in private practice and done pro bono work. She has a strong support of her home senators, understands and respects the difference between advocacy and being a judge. Strongly support her nomination. We'll also vote on Lydia Grigsby, who's been nominated to be a district court judge for the District of Maryland. Many of us know her. She uh, has only one questionable thing in her background. She worked for Chairman Leahy. She was previously a staffer on the Judiciary Committee, serving as Chief Counsel for Privacy and Information Policy under the Chairman. Before that, Judge Grigsby spent 10 years at the Department of Justice as an Assistant U.S. Attorney. In 2014, the Committee approved her nomination to be judge on the U.S. Court of Federal Claims by a voice vote, confirmed on the Senate floor by a voice vote as well. Since then, she's done an outstanding job. ABA has unanimously rated her well-qualified. Judge Grigsby be the first African-American woman, first woman of color to serve as a district court judge in the District of Mer Maryland. Finally, we'll be voting on Ronald Davis, nominated to serve as next director of the U.S. Marshal Service. Uh, Mr. Davis has spent almost 30 years of his life in law enforcement. 20 years with the Oakland Police Department, and then went on to serve for more than eight years as Chief of Police in East Palo Alto. In East Palo Alto, he launched initiatives curbing gang violence and building community trust. Crime rates fell in the city. An article in the Palo Alto Weekly, published shortly after he started as chief, said for the first time in years, there's a palpable sense of hope about the East Palo Alto Police Department. Shortly after, he was asked to lead the Justice Department's Office of Community oriented policing service known as COPS. In this role, he oversaw hundreds of millions of dollars in grants to state and local police departments to hire and retain thousands of officers. Uh, he, in other words, Davis's leadership allowed police departments around the country to bring on more officers. Throughout his career, he's shown time and again a deep respect for law enforcement and a belief in the need for police reform, and he's shown us they don't need to be mutually exclusive. It's no surprise that he's garnered the support of virtually every major law enforcement organization, Fraternal Order of Police, National Sheriff's Association, Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, and numerous others. They recognize, as do I, the vast qualifications he has to lead the U.S. Marshal Service.